My generation is considered as a generation of quitters. And quitting, man, quitting is a dirty word. Walking away from something is usually perceived as a weakness or a liability. Millennials have gotten very good at doing this, but even better at being criticized for it. And no, I'm not talking about leaving jobs, which coincidentally falls at 60% of millennials do in their first two years of employment. I'm talking about quitting a chosen path to follow a different one. See, when a person does this, it's often labeled as a rebel or a dropout. But when this person succeeds at this new path, then he or she becomes a role model, a change agent or an influencer. Crazy, right? My latest HR interviewer was a little bit confused about my profile. She went through my CV and noticed the number of jobs and positions I've had in a very short working life, uh, the number of cities I lived in, even the variety of my education going from business to art schools. Yet all my psychometric tests show that I was in a normal range of stability, decision-taking, and skills required to do this job. So she asked me point blank what led like, to jump from place to place in what seemed pretty much every aspect of my life. And for a moment, I thought how this question made me feel, like a failure or something I was proud of. Where had all those decisions taken me, and if I regret making any of those? None, I thought. So the answer came to me as an epiphany. I'm a quitter, and I'm very good at it. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed, because that means that I'm not alone in this. We all have quit something, and we really need to stop telling ourselves that it's a sign of weakness. It's not. Of course, a person that starts something and doesn't see it through might be considered lazy, entitled, or simply bailing. Yes, all of them are possible. But also, they might be choosing to leave something already good in the search of something great. It takes courage to quit, but too often feels like it's wrong. Maybe because most of the decisions we take in life are driven by our society's expectations instead of our own needs and feelings. A couple of years ago, I was engaged to be married after a nine-year relationship. I was about to make one of the biggest decisions of my life, but deep down, I knew it was not the right one. So I had to quietly admit to myself that the thrill I felt of my life at that moment was so much more exciting than choosing a dress or imagining my own household. And I also realized I wanted to seize that moment while it lasted, despite the consequences I knew I was going to have to face. See, in my society, Marriage is a success milestone, and I was rejecting it. It took me many months to overcome those social expectations and finally realizing that something I once wanted, but I didn't want it anymore. And quitting that didn't make me a failure, it just made me the general of my own life's battles. It allowed me to choose my next move. The act of living is a daily battle. Every day, we defend our beliefs and we fight our demons and blessings. We embrace new conceptions and leave old ones. That happens every day. So why don't we develop strategies to face those battles, to decide when to stay in the fight or to walk away, like generals do? So when I decided to end up my engagement, I designed a survival strategy. I needed to be prepared for what they feared to be alone, clingy, people-pleaser me was about to face. See, before, I spent 90% of my time talking, thinking, or being with somebody else, my fiancé. When I pulled the plug, I knew I was going to have to invest all that time into myself, and I panicked. So the first thing, I erased my Facebook account, because social media is the worst frenemy we'll ever have. Then I re-engaged with my closest friends, as I needed allies against the gossip fest with me as a headliner that I knew was coming. My weekdays were consumed by a very demanding job, but I still needed an after-work activity. So I enrolled into one of these trendy boot camps that demand your assistance six days a week, or if not, they kick you out. And then came the weekends, my worst days. Every cliche you're imagining happened, so I had no option but to sign up for postgraduate studies Fridays and Saturdays. 
no more weekend FOMOs, no time to sit home alone feeling like a failure. And even if I did feel like one, at least I would be a fit, educated and social one. <laughs> I eventually realized that if I had that courage to walk away, I needed the same courage to keep on going. So one year into this routine and the magic started to happen. I ran a marathon. I had another degree to pimp up my CV, and my friends became my new family. See, when you think your decisions this thorough, having a strategy only enhances the outcome. I call this conscious quitting. What do I mean by this? We just don't impulsively walk away. No, you only do it after you evaluated the pros and cons of staying and living. Then you create a strategy, a well-thought-out plan. Quitting becomes a choice, an action, instead of a reaction. And I think that's the main difference between just quitting as a rant and quitting as a choice. Quitting enters all aspects in life. And it's not giving up, by the way. Giving up, as I see it, is not having an objective to pursue, simply not caring. Quitting enters our day-to-day -day lives, jobs, activities, relationships, everything. And if you really think about it, you all have quit something, and most of those times has been a sign of strength, not of weakness. Having a strategy for these good quits is as important as acknowledging when quitting is the no-go-to strategy. We should embrace both of them. I often wonder what would have happened if I'd stay in everything I've quit a little bit longer. Maybe in some cases it would have made the difference, yes, but in some of them it was absolutely the right call. But as everything in life, it's like flipping a coin, and you need to have a strategy for both sides of it. I learned to polish my good quitting abilities by creating plans. I mean, you can control everything that surrounds you all the time. There will always be unanticipated financial risks, heartaches and could-have-beens. But I really think that all of those can be cushioned with a well-thought-out plan that allows us to enjoy more the commitments we take in life. After all, we are all in this together. If it happened to me, it happened to you, most likely. And maybe it's not so much about embracing quitting as it is, as much as reframing the concept. Quitting isn't a lack of commitment. It's a strategy to deal with life's daily battles. What if that strategy made us a little bit happier sometimes? Isn't that an idea worth thinking about? Thank you.